Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio, along with Pete the Cat, Cookie Monster, and Lord Vader, here to show you how to use Zoom's new Immersive View. We'll talk about what it is, how to use it, and some of the quirks and problems with it. So before we begin, this is a new feature that requires Zoom 5.6.3 or higher. Zoom is one of the few programs out there that does not auto-update, so you need to manually update to get access to this feature. If you are not sure how to update, check out the link in the description below this video. That shows you how. Second, you will also need to enable this in your browser settings. So it might be enabled for you by default. For me, it was not. This can depend on your organization. So you need to log into your account at zoom.us, go to your meeting settings, scroll down to advance, and make sure that this setting for Immersive View is turned on. Now to enable Immersive View once you're in the meeting, assuming you are the meeting host, we'll talk about co-hosts and regular participants a little later, go up here to the View button where previously we only had Speaker and Gallery View. If you're not familiar with the basic view controls in Zoom, again, check out the description below this video for some other tutorials on that. Now we have a button for Immersive Scene. So if you go ahead and click that, Zoom will give you a handful of predefined background scenes here. Some of them are sort of silly, like putting everybody in different portraits, and some of them are designed to look more like a standard conference room or classroom. So I am going to go ahead and pick this first one here. You also see it gives you little numbers for the number of people that are designed to fit in the scene. So this is a relatively new feature. There aren't a ton of options yet. There are a couple big ones for a 25 person classroom or 24, a couple smaller ones that are only two people and then some mid-sized kind of five or six person meeting rooms. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this art gallery, click start. And you see that Zoom will then put everybody's thumbnails in one of these portraits. Now notice that when I do that, I get this little notification at the top that everyone can now see this as the scene. So when you do this as the host, it will also create this view for everyone else. And just like how, according to an update sometime last year, you can now click to drag and rearrange the Zoom gallery view, you can also do that here. So I have an empty fifth picture slot over here on the right. So if you click somebody, then you can drag them and it will snap into that slot. So I can't put Cookie Monster up here on the wall. If I don't get him close enough, it'll just kind of automatically snap back to a different location or it'll snap him over here. It looks like you can also resize people, but again, in this case, it's snapping people into these picture frames, so I can't actually freely resize these. I can also rearrange people. For example, if I want to swap Cookie Monster and Pete the Cat, I move him over here, it will automatically swap their locations. Now, if you want to change the scene or stop this altogether, you go back up here to your view button, you can switch back to speaker or gallery view, or this is a little confusing because there's a checkbox there, but you can click change immersive view and it will let you select a different scene. So let's try out one of these bigger classroom scenes, for example, and it looks like it will show you in advance where everybody is going to be, but you cannot click and drag this beforehand. So when I try to click and drag people, it's just gonna drag that whole window around. There's also this option to place participants into the scene automatically or manually, but again, even if I click manually here, that's a little confusingly named. That isn't letting me arrange people manually, that is letting you decide who is in it. So by default, it added everybody here, but let's say I want to X out Lord Vader, then it would only add three people, and it looks like I could add him back in manually by going in, typing his name, and it will add there. So place participants in the scene automatically and manually, Naming is a little confusing there. Again, you would think that means it lets you rearrange people in advance, but it's just deciding who is going to be there. So again, I'm going to hit start. And now we're gonna check out this classroom scene. So you can see Vader disappeared there. That, that is because I am using toys instead of real humans. So you can see it did a decent job finding the outline of Pete the Cat, I guess because he is the most humanoid. Cookie Monster, it's having a little bit of trouble distinguishing the background. And since Vader is that little Lego minifigure, it couldn't really find him at all. And he disappeared here. But again, assuming you just have real humans in your meeting, that's not gonna be a problem for you. And again, once I've started, I can click and drag to move myself or other people around. And even though it has these resize controls, those don't really seem to do anything because it just snaps back to the appropriate size for this background. So now let's go ahead and talk about some of the potential quirks or issues with this that I'm willing to bet Zoom might wind up fixing or changing in a future update. One is that you lose access to the menu controls for the participants when you're in this view, meaning if I right click on myself or somebody else, I get nothing. So if I go back to my regular gallery view, so I'm gonna go up here, 
switch back to gallery view, I will get a confirmation that this is going to stop immersive view for everyone. When you're in this view, if you right click on somebody, you get a whole bunch of different options. So making them host or co-host, muting them, removing from the meeting, all these different things. And then with yourself, you also get the option to hide self view, which we'll talk about in a second. You also have pinning and spotlighting, which aren't really as relevant when you're in that immersive view because you wouldn't be pinning or spotlighting one person. But point being, when you go into the immersive view, you lose apparently lose access to all of these controls. So I'm gonna switch back over. Again, let's do immersive scene. We're gonna pick this one to make sure Vader shows up because I don't want him to get mad and force choke me or anything. And again, right click, I get nothing here. I can open the participants mendo window while I am in um, immersive view. And from here, I can do some of these controls, but you, you lose the ability to just right click on people's thumbnails directly and access these. So if you need to access those controls, which again, I'm not gonna go over all of them in this video, you need to open the participants window to access the people and get those options. So this next point is a little more subtle. I've switched back to the regular gallery view. I have my own video available here. And by default, Zoom mirrors your video for you, but nobody else. So it feels like you are looking into a mirror when you view yourself. So I am physically raising my right hand right now. I'm sitting at this computer and I'm seeing my mirrored Im image, which looks like it's raising his left hand, but it's on my right in the physical world and on the computer monitor. When you switch to that immersive scene and everybody is looking at the exact same thing, it unmirrors you for yourself as well because it's showing this same scene to everyone. So again, I'm raising my right hand right now, but my image is no longer mirrored on the screen in front of me. So when I move my head to the right, my head moves to the left on the computer monitor. So that can kind of trip you up if you're looking at yourself and you're used to seeing that mirrored view in Zoom. But it's kind of weird to have yourself to, here to begin with if you are using one of these classroom formats. So obviously, if you were a teacher giving a lecture to a classroom, it'd be kind of trippy to see a copy of yourself sitting in the middle of the room. So you might just want to remove yourself altogether. Again, we've all kind of grown used to looking at ourselves in Zoom over the past year, even though I think now there's some new research that says this is actually unhealthy because it makes you hyper self-conscious about your own appearance constantly, whereas... Normally, when you're having a face-to-face -face conversation with someone, you don't have a mirror right there and you can't see yourself the whole time. So that's kind of a, a side topic. But anyway, let's see what happens if I go here and hit hide self view. And now I'm going to switch to the immersive scene. And oh, interesting. It looks like it's going to put me in there anyway. So even though I hid my self view in gallery view, it did not hide me when I switched to the immersive scene. But... It looks like I can delete myself from that scene separately, ah, but then it still puts me up here. So it's really hard to actually get rid of yourself in the immersive scene. What if I right click? So I don't have another hide self view option. I don't think I can actually get, get rid of myself unless I stop my video all altogether. And even then I'm still stuck with my thumbnail. So again, if you're teaching and you don't want to look at yourself, you just want to look at your class, it doesn't look like you can fully get rid of yourself in the immersive scene. So let's go back to gallery view. Again, I'm gonna hit stop. So here when I hide self view, I disappear completely. I also don't see my own thumbnail. But again, if I go to that immersive scene, even if I say manually remove myself, start, it's still gonna put me in this little strip across the top. Finally, there's one more annoying thing here that hopefully they will address in a future update it doesn't add people to the scene if they join the meeting after you've already started it. So I have logged out as Pete the Cat and rejoined the meeting, and you see it went back to my default name there. I'm going to admit that computer, which I now have sitting next to me here from the waiting room. I'm going to hit admit. It's gonna take a second to load, so we will wait for that to happen. And you see that when that computer joins, it added it up here in this top thumbnail bar. It did not automatically put the thumbnail in the immersive scene. So I am going to have to, if I wanna add this person, stop, go back to my regular gallery view, and then go back to immersive scene, start over, and now you can see it's added the view from that computer. But again, that's annoying if, say, for example, you wanted to use 
this classroom view and have people pop up as they're joining the class. So you kind of get this physical feeling like students are trickling into a physical classroom. Apparently that's not going to work. As people join, they're just going to show up in those thumbnails across the top and you would have to wait for everybody to join before you start the immersive scene if you don't want to have to if you don't want to have to keep stopping and restarting it. And so I lied, that wasn't the last thing. There are a couple more features I wanted to check out here. It does let you upload your own image or use your own video background as the virtual scene. So let's see how it handles that. First, I'm gonna select my own video here, hit start, and okay. So again, I am using toys here, so it's not doing a great job actually detecting these since these aren't human heads. You know, it's kind of doing a, you know, it's actually finding the outline of Pete the Cat there, but not Cookie Monster. So here, unlike those other scenes, it doesn't have positions where it's snapping into place. I can put everybody anywhere on the screen. I can resize them, and it looks like I can cover my own face with them. So they're, they're just kind of a layer in front on my camera. So here, if for whatever reason you wanted to populate the background of your own video with your participants, you can do that. But note that in this case, I am full screen, so I cannot click and drag to resize myself. I can only do that with the other participants. So it also lets you upload a custom image. So let's try that. I'm gonna go up here to the view button, click change immersive view. You get this little plus icon where you can select a file from your computer. I've already done that and added my own image here. So it looks like that defaulted to 25 people and it's just going to arrange everybody evenly on the grid. Again, it doesn't have these little automatic spaces that people are going to snap into like the classrooms do. So here, these resize tools do work. You can scale everybody, and I didn't notice it actually doesn't limit, um, the, or doesn't keep the aspect ratio constant. So you can make somebody really tall and skinny or wide and narrow here and move everybody around wherever you want in your own custom image. What about co-hosts? This is a question that always comes up. So I have swapped host privileges over to this laptop and made myself a co-host here on the desktop computer. And it looks like I no longer have that option. So only the host can start the immersive view for now. And if I remove co-host privileges entirely here, again, that's gonna be the same thing for regular participants. So I'm gonna go over here, remove co-host permissions. Now I'm just a regular participant. And again, regular participants, cannot start immersive view and it does not appear to be something like screen sharing or annotations where the host can give regular participants the ability to do those. As of right now, the immersive view controls are only for the host. Now, as a final, final note here, I am not going to go over all of these because this is already a pretty long video, but Zoom does have an FAQ on their page about this on the website. So does it work in breakout rooms? What does it do to recordings? What happens if people have different versions of Zoom? All of that stuff is answered on their website. Again, I'm not gonna go through all of those scenarios in the video, but I usually get questions about all these different details and cases like this in the comments. So I will put this link in the description below this video. So if you have one of these questions, you can check out the official answer from Zoom there. All right, as always, I hope you found that useful. If you have been watching my tutorials since the pandemic started, you, like me, probably did not think we'd still be watching Zoom tutorials a year later, but here we are. I think people will continue to find uses for Zoom even if we return to primarily in-person teaching. If you are a new viewer, please go ahead and leave a comment below this video if you have a question or a suggestion for another tutorial because that is where I get many of my ideas for newer videos. Thank you.